All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this video. So this is going to be a continuation for the Understand C++ series, which I'm creating, which is my latest series. And basically, my, it's my first coding series. So anyway, in this episode, we're going to be learning about if statements, what they are, how the hell to use them. And then once you understand the if statements, coding basically becomes a lot simpler. And then you can actually start making some pretty decent programs. So let's go and uh, go into C++. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the C++, uh, C++ yet, you can do that by clicking the link on my first video. And I'll also probably leave it in the description of this one. So anyway, we can name our program whatever we want once again. So I'll just do uh, episode 3. Bam. So once we're in the console, we're going to be doing some if statement stuff. So like always, use the namespace, uh, which is the standard namespace. I'll just zoom in this in a bit for you guys so you can see better. There we go. All right. So now inside of the main function, uh, this is how you're going to use an if statement. So what an if statement basically is, well, if you think about it, in everyday life, you ha you'd make if statements by yourself. So, for example, if you look out the window and, and then you're about to go outside, you check if it's raining. So you, so you kind of have an if statement. You, you look outside, outside the window, and if it's raining, grab your coat and put on your coat. Otherwise, just go outside without your coat, right? So that's kind of what an if statement really is. And it's really good to learn about it, and it really helps. Um, it basically unlocks programming for, uh, for everyone, so... So I'll just show you uh, what an if statement really is. So over here, let's just say, let, let's just uh, do a small program that gives us the, 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 the highest value of two numbers. So let's just get, get two numbers. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to have two integers, a and b, or actually no, I'll, I'll make them double so that they, uh, they can also be decimals. So a and b, we're going to make a equal five, four, and then make b equal 71. So now let's make an if statement. If a is greater than b, t uh, write, uh, write c out, so print in the console, a, the value of a, is greater than b. So now, if we run this program, let's see what happens. It just exits. Why? Because what our program does, what so behind our program just exited. So the the reason why is because look at our if statement. Our if statement is saying that if the a if the value of a is greater than the value of b print out this shit and that's it so our program did that that's not true so it didn't print out this shit but let's but now let's take away the if statement and let's see what happens then i hope you guys can guess what's going to happen is it should just print out the value right there because there's no if statement see so so that's basically what an if statement really is is it's a check it's a comparison kind of check to see if this is bigger than this, or if this condition is true, then do this shit. So now let's 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 start to do other stuff. What if I want if a is greater than b, print out this shit, and then otherwise, if uh, otherwise, just print out that b is greater. So the way we do that is we can do that by an else like an else statement. So right after the if statement, you type an else, and then inside of the else statement you can type in what you want the program to do if the if statement is not true that's what i want the program to do so now it's going to say that the value of b is greater keep in mind yeah see keep in mind this else statement will only execute if this condition is false if this condition that a is greater than b is true so let's say that i just i just changed the value of b to 1 if this condition is true then this will not be printed out that's what an else statement is. See, the value of a is greater than b. And the other one was not printed. So that's basically if else statements. Um, now, what if we want to have a couple of ifs in a row? Or, or what, if, what if I have three variables? So wait, what if the value of b and a is the same? 
Well, if we run this program right now, it's going to give us a bug because it's just going to say the value of b is greater. Why? Because if we look at our code here, it checks, is a greater than b? No, they're the same. So since a is not greater than b, it's just going to do ever in the, the, the shit in the else statement. But what if I, I, what if I wanted to say when the values are the same, just say that the values are the same? Well, then I, well, then I, I need to do that using an else if statement. And basically what an else if statement is, is it's an if statement inside of an else statement. And the way we, the, and the way we write that in C++ syntax is just type in else if, and that's it, just like that. So else if, and then we can type in our condition over here. So else if b is greater than a, do this shit. So right now, as you can see, this condition is not true, and this condition is not true. So the program will, will just close because the, the, there's nothing here. But I want it to print out, we want it to print out that A and B have the same value. So we write, so then after these two if statements, or this if statement and this else if statement, we can do an else statement, which will tell us to print out, uh, to print out that the values of the two are the same, of the two variables are the same. So else, otherwise, so we check, is A greater than B? If so, print out this shit. If it's not, if, uh, if B is greater than A, print out the other shit. Otherwise, if both of those are false, then that means that they have to be the same value. So just print out, see out, the same value. So now, if we run the program, it'll just print out the same value. The same value. So now, how can we implement this into a program that's actually pretty cool? So let's try to implement that in the calculator program that we made in the last episode. So if you can remember in the last episode, we had, uh, we had two numbers, number one and number two, which basically we, we had an addition calculator. So, so I'm just going to quickly uh, get, get the code for that or just like write, write it in here uh, really quickly. So if you want a more detailed explanation on, on this calculator and mathematical additions and operators, I suggest you watch the video uh, my last my last episode video, so please enter number one, and then we get the number one, and then please enter number two, and then we get number two, and there we go. So we have our two numbers. Now we have to make a now we kind of want to make a menu, so let's just make a quick menu for our calculator, calculator. So if the user presses one, we do addition. If the user press, presses two, we do subtraction, et cetera, et cetera. So C out. What? You fucking want my, uh, what operation would you like to perform? Okay. Okay. So then over here, we, we can, uh, now we can do our, menu so th 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 this will th this will just be a layout for the menu so see out enter one for addition and sure we can end the line and then enter two for subtraction and then we can end the line again Enter three four multiplication and then enter four for division. There we go. So now we have a menu. So if we run this program, what will happen is it'll ask us for value one, value two, and then it'll give us the menu. And there we go. So that so that, that's what we want. As you can see, this is a, this is a decent menu. We can we can definitely see what's going on here. Uh, I should just probably end the line before that. There we go. Easy. And then we can have there now 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 it should look a bit better. Anyway, um, now the program will look a little bit more spaced out. It'll be a bit better. There you go. We have a good me we have a solid menu, solid foundation right there. Uh, now, we want to actually get the value from the user. What the hell the, the, uh, kind of operation does he want us to do? So we can uh, create another variable, which will be an int, because 
our menus only work in ints. Like he he he's not gonna he's not gonna enter a decimal number, so because that's not part of our menu. So uh, we'll we'll just do choice. We'll we'll just create a variable called choice, and then this will be the choice the number, the the kind of operation that he wants to do. If he wants to do addition, he'll type in one. So choice will be equal to one, and he'll type two for subtraction, uh, etc. So now we're gonna get that value from the user. So C in choice. And now we, we want to do, we want to use those if statements. So if you want to try this out for yourself, pause the video here and then try to make the program by, by yourself that adds the two numbers and, and prints out the, two, uh, the, the, the addition of the two numbers. If, the, if, he, if he presses one, if he chooses one as his choice, if he enters two as his choice, do the subtraction, three as his choice, do multiplication of the two numbers, etc., etc. So pause the video here if you want to try it by yourself. All right, I'm just gonna show you the solution. Uh, so right now, the, the the way I see it is that this is just a bunch of if statements. It's three if statements, and uh, and then else statements. Or it can be four if sta if statements, and then we can have, um, then we can have a little fail safe at the end. So let's do it. If the choice is equal to one, add the two numbers. Uh, Answer equals number one plus number two. So you, so, so you might notice over here, why the heck did, did I make the choice, uh, choice equals one? Why is it not just one equal? Why is it two equals? This is, the, this is where things get a little bit complicated, but, but I'll try to explain it. Um, basically, with a, with a single um, equal sign, you're making the value equal to the variable, you're actually assigning this variable with that value. So if I had if choice equals one, I'd basically make choice equal to one. That, that's basically what's happening here. I'm making choice equal to one. But if I have two equal signs, then it's a comparison. If the choice is equal to one, do this. So these two, two equal signs is, makes it as a comparison. If the value of this is equal to this, then do that. But if I just had this, it would just make this value one. I hope that makes sense. Um, just just play around with it, and then you'll 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 understand it. The best way you the best way to learn is by trying it yourself. So so if choice is one, make my uh, make the answer. Uh, I'll just I'll just declare answer as a variable at the top. Make the answer number one plus number two. So otherwise, if the choice is so otherwise, the choice is not number one. Otherwise, if the choice is number is uh, equal to two, may do do a subtraction. So answer equals number one minus number two. So now, otherwise, if the choice is three, if the user entered three, do a multiplication. So this is how you do a multiplication in, uh, in C++. You just type it, you just do a star, and then, yeah, the two, the two, th the th the two things you want to multiply. So number one, star is the multiplication symbol, number two. This, uh, the dash is a subtraction symbol, and the plus sign is an addition symbol. So now, uh, yeah, so now, else, if the choice is, num is 4, we can set our answer to answer equals number 1 divided by number, number 2. So to do a division, you just do a slash. And now, now what if the user is being a dickhead, and, and he's trying to, do like fuck up our thing. We we can make a fail safe here, and that's why I have four if statements. So now, otherwise, if the user did not pick one, two, three, or four, which is our only options, then we tell him to fuck himself. So else, see out. Nope. Uh, invalid input. And we smile, sad face. There we go. <laughs> so else print that cool so that's how it is and oh and then also we want to close the application if this is the case so the way we do that is we can just type in a return value here that will close our function so return zero so this is basically our fail safe if if the user is trying to be mean and and he's just being crazy and then trying to break our thing by, by not picking one, two, three, or four, then we can just close the function right away. Returning zero 
uh, will will exit this function right away. So if it, um, so then after outside of that, we can just display our answer. The answer is and then answer. So let's see if this program works. And just to show, yeah, so just to show you what I mean by, by the return zero over here, if I do number one, number two, it's so number two and two, three, I guess. Uh, let's say that I pick five or six. See, this is not one, two, three, or four. So it'll just type invalid input and that's it. But what if I didn't do the, the, the return zero? What if I didn't do the return zero over here? What if I took that out? Well, it's still gonna try to see out answer, but we don't know the value for answer. So our, our program will, will, have a, will have a mental breakdown if you think about it. So I'll just do that and we got seven. The answer is some crazy crap. Why? Because the program is still trying to run this, this bit of code right here. It's still trying to run this bit of code, but it has no idea what the value for answer is because we didn't assign it any value. So we have to make it so that the program closes after this, after the invalid statement. So the way we do that is just we, we return any number. So return zero or return, return one, because that's usually what, what people use for errors. So let me just see again, invalid input, and that's it. All right, so that's basically if else statements. Uh, let's see if this program actually does work, in fact. Let's just do something simple. So 10 divided by five should give us two. So we want to do division, so that's four. 10 divided by five is two, the answer is two. Now, just to show you that this does work with decimals, we can do 11.11 11 uh, and then minus 2.34 subtraction, 8.77, and that is indeed, yeah, just do some mental math. You can obviously see that that's correct. Bam. Yeah, that's correct for sure. 100%. Yes, for sure. Okay. <laughs> I just have to double check there for a second. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching. This is uh, If Statements. I really hope that you enjoy uh, you learning this, uh, if statements are pretty good and they're, they're the fundamental, they're the essence, they are the soul of coding. So if you, if you don't understand if statements, then please understand it before moving on to loops or anything, because if statements are basically, they, they are the essentials of coding that, that that's what coding and life is built on. It's just if statements, everything, everything around you is a freaking if statement, man. You go out, wake up in the morning. It's like, do I want to go to school or not? If I want to go to school, then put on my shoes and go outside. Else, stay in bed and fucking turn off the video.